Have you ever dreamed of a house by the sea? Of waking up every morning to the sound of waves and seagulls? But what if the sea looks like this, and instead of a scenic view, there is debris and ruins? This is what happened to Ukraine's port city of Mariupol as it was besieged and practically destroyed by Russian forces in 2022. Though images of the city are horrific, they don't seem to scare off some Russians looking to buy a house by the sea. Can anyone tell me how to buy a new place in Mariupol? I want to exchange a room in St. Petersburg for an apartment in Mariupol. I'm looking for real estate options in areas next to the Sea of Azov. So why would Russians want to move to Mariupol and other occupied areas? A significant role is being played by Moscow and not for the first time. But why? My name is Natalia Chukutun, I'm a reporter at the Kyiv Independent. Let's talk about it. To watch more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Natalia and Serhii, a couple from the town of Man, who's just 20 kilometers away from Mariupol. They used to run a store selling building materials and household goods. They had a big house and a dog named Ralph. As Russia's full-scale invasion arrived in their town, the couple chose to flee. The two first moved to the west of Ukraine and later to Switzerland and have allowed their friends from Mariupol to stay in their house while they are gone. As soon as they moved into our house, literally a day after that, people in military uniforms came to them. They said that the house had been nationalized and that they had to leave. The soldiers also raided our store, then they took the keys from our saleswoman and said that the store also had been nationalized. People from Manhoz later told Natalia and Serhii that the Russian installed police chief in the Russian-occupied parts of Donetsk Oblast had moved into the house. Now, according to Natalia's friends in Manhoz, nobody's living there, but the house is still in the hands of Russia's proxy authorities in Donetsk Oblast. This story is by no means exceptional, but rather one of countless examples of Russia's war crimes in Ukraine. Many of them have occurred in Mariupol. Mariupol, once a prosperous city of more than 400,000 people, has now turned into a wasteland of rubble. As of May 2023, about 120,000 residents remain in the city, according to the Institute for the Study of War. The Mariupol City Council believes that Russia's relentless attacks last year killed at least 20,000 people. However, it is currently impossible to establish the exact number of civilian deaths in Mariupol. Hundreds of thousands fled the city to escape the bombing, while others were forcibly deported to Russia. After committing these war crimes, Moscow reportedly came up with an ambitious plan to increase the population of the city by approximately 300,000 people by 2035. But how exactly? According to Ukraine's National Resistance Center, a part of Ukraine's special forces, the plan involves relocating people from Russia to occupied Mariupol. As part of the plan, Moscow has begun a program offering cheap mortgages with an interest rate of 2% to encourage Russians to move there. Is it possible for a service member to get a mortgage to buy a house in the city of Mariupol? According to the National Resistance Center, those relocating to the occupied areas not only include Russian installed officials and law enforcement officers, but also construction workers from Russia, Belarus and other countries. Similar instances of repopulating Russian-occupied areas were also reported in Luhansk and Kherson oblasts. For example, in October 2022, Russian proxy authorities in then-occupied parts of Kherson oblast deported many Ukrainians under the pretense of a humanitarian evacuation. But in fact, this was done to force them out of their homes so that Russian soldiers could move in. This is just one of many examples of Russia's systematic efforts to rid the area of Ukrainians and replace them with Russians. The Institute for the Study of War says that such repopulation campaigns may amount to a deliberate ethnic cleansing effort. Russia's repopulation campaigns in Ukraine aren't anything novel. Russia has been systematically changing the population in occupied Ukrainian territories since its invasion in 2014. Meet Ksenia Schwartz, a real estate agent from the Russian city of Perm. 
I made my dream come true when I moved from the cold Urals to sunny Crimea. In her video blog, she often shows her clients who also relocated to Russian-occupied Crimea, like Yelena Sherman and Sergei Starkov from PRM Cry. I came up with this idea in 2014, when Crimea became ours. I got really excited about living by the sea. This dream was likely shared by between 500,000 to 800,000 Russians who, according to the Ukrainian president's mission in Crimea, have also illegally arrived in the peninsula since Russia annexed it in 2014. And Moscow, of course, encourages them to move there. The Russian government created special programs offering money to Russian doctors and teachers willing to work in Crimean villages and smaller towns. In the meantime, Russian dictator Vladimir Putin signed a decree banning foreign citizens from owning land in Crimea in 2021. Of course, that includes Ukrainian citizens who refuse to take Russian passports. According to human rights activists, this means they can be stripped of their property, evicted from their homes or even deported. In 2021, Ukraine's Regional Center for Human Rights documented over 3,700 cases of Crimeans being deprived of their rights to own land in Crimea. Now, after its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia is expanding this practice. In particular, Russians are giving confiscated houses to Russian soldiers in Crimea, according to the general staff of Ukraine's armed forces. Yet Russia's ethnic cleansing campaigns are not even a particularly modern invention for Moscow. Shortly after World War II, the Soviet Union organized Operation West, a massive deportation of people from the west of Ukraine to Siberia and Kazakhstan in 1947. Almost 80,000 people were deported in just a single day. This is how the Soviet regime tried to suppress the Ukrainian liberation movement. Yet, ethnic Ukrainians were not the only ones to face deportations and evictions. In 1944, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin accused the entire Crimean Tatar population in Crimea of collaborating with the Nazis. Around 190,000 Crimean Tatars were deported from Crimea to other parts of the Soviet Union, mostly to Uzbekistan. More than 40,000 Bulgarians, Armenians, Greeks, Turks and Roma people were also expelled from Crimea. Tens of thousands died during the brutal deportations or in exile. In August 1944, the State Defense Committee of the Soviet Union issued a decree on relocating 51,000 collective farm workers to Crimea. Most of them were from Russia. In a bid to erase any traces of Crimean Tatars from their homeland, the Soviet Union destroyed tombs, mosques, and books, says historian Andriy Ivanets. The Soviets also renamed cities, towns, and villages in Crimea. For example, the town of Akmachet became known as Chornomorske, and the town of Akshay as Rozdolne, and the town of Kalai as Azovske. Crimean Tatars were allowed to return to Crimea only in late 1980s, after nearly 40 years in exile. But as Russia started its war in 2014 and occupied Crimea, many were forced to leave again. While those who chose to stay are often being persecuted by Russia, the successor state of the Soviet Union. Throughout history, Russia's occupation of Ukrainian lands has been accompanied by ethnic cleansing. Now history is repeating itself, as Russia has once again come to subjugate Ukraine and its peoples.